Okay, in chapter 2, section 8, we will continue with derivatives of functions. Okay, so the first one, a continuous function is always differentiable, so that is false. So there are cases where the derivative breaks down even with a continuous function. So the easiest one I can show is something like this. Uh, let me actually write it like that. So let's say it has this curve has a sharp corner. So recall that the derivative is the slope of the tangent line. So if you were to zoom in on this, the slope is negative, and then the slope is a negative, and then is it zero? We're not sure, and then it quickly changes to positive. So it has this really quick change, um, and it will become undefined. So that one's false. So even though this is continuous, I don't have to lift my pencil to draw it, the derivative will actually not exist. <clears throat> okay, this one says use the graph and then sketch the graph of f prime. So what we can see here is, let me do this. So just start drawing tangent lines. This slope is negative, this slope is negative, this slope is negative, this slope is zero, this slope is positive, this slope is positive, positive, zero, negative, down to the right, negative, down to the right, negative. So our derivative, whatever it looks like, has to be in the negative, so it's negative, it's down here, and then it's going to approach zero right at this point, so it's going to hit zero, and then it's positive, 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 but then it's going to come back and go through zero again right here, and then it will go into the negative region. So it should look something like that. And again, all I based that off of was this. These are all negatives until here, so this is negative until right there, it's zero. Then all of these were positive, so I'm above the y-axis here. These are all positives values until right here where I get zero again. And then all these slopes are negative, which means I'm down here in the negative part of the y-axis. So that's how I'm getting that. <clears throat> Just the slope, is it up or down or flat? And if you look, the closest thing to my drawing is this one right here. Okay, so these are not meant to be too bad. So same idea. <clears throat> one of the easiest ways to do this is find where should the slope be zero. So the slope is zero right here, here, and here. So at those humps, I should have zeros. So this hump is right here. This hump is right on the y-axis, and then this hump is over here to the right, and so we get those three zeros. Um, so this one has the same one, so we have to decide between these two. Well, notice <clears throat> these slopes, because this function is decreasing, are all negatives. Then it's zero, then all these slopes are positive, then it's zero, then these slopes are down to the right, which are negatives, and then it's zero, and then these slopes are up and to the right, so they're positives. So the function should go from negative to, pos to zero, to zero, to positive values, so above the y-axis, back to zero, then underneath the y-axis, so back to negatives, back to zero, and then back to positive, positive. So it's negative values, positive values, negative values, positive values. In the derivative, we're not looking at the slope, is it positive or negative? We're actually looking at where is the graph drawn. So this graph is drawn in the negative y realm, so that's negative slopes from the original picture. Okay, same idea for, so, we have positive, 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 zero, positive slopes, zero, then negative, 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 but it's flattening out, it's getting close to zero, 
and these are negatives. So notice it's positive, 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 and then zero. So this point matches this point here, right on the y-axis. And then they're all negatives, but they're starting to get closer to zero. So it's going to be that picture. Okay, so the easy ones are done, unfortunately. Now we have to actually do arithmetic. <clears throat> so it says, find the derivative of the function using the definition of a derivative. Now there is more than one definition of the derivative, but I like to just use the same one, so there's no confusion. So the one we used last section, I think we should use it again, is f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches 0 of the function evaluated at x plus h minus the original function all divided by h. So if f of x is ax plus s, then f of x plus h is actually pretty easy. It's a times x plus h plus s. So plugging this in to the derivative definition, we would get ax plus ah plus s. So all I did was distribute this a and get those two terms plus the s minus f of x, which would be minus ax minus s all over h. And we're going to get ax to cancel ax s to cancel s. So all we're left with is the derivative is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of a h over h. Those two h's will cancel. So I don't even have to evaluate the limit. h's are gone. So this all collapses to a. So the derivative is just the letter a. Okay, state the domain of the function, state the domain of its derivative. So the function is a line. So it starts at s units on the y-axis and it has a slope of a. So the slope of this line is the value a. Well, that's the same as the derivative. So the slope of a straight line is its derivative. So if I were to plot the derivative, so here's f of x, here's f prime of x, it is going to be a horizontal line at a. So the derivative is a for any x value. So it becomes a horizontal line. And the domain of both of these functions is negative infinity to infinity, and this is going to go off to negative infinity, and this is going to go off to positive infinity. So that's how we get those domains right there. Okay, problem six, find the derivative. So to get the derivative, we're going to need g of x plus h which is going to equal the square root of 9 minus x minus h. Therefore, the, the derivative is going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of the square root of 9 minus x minus h minus the square root of 9 minus x all over h. <clears throat> Okay, like we did before, this is going to be a similar approach for all these problems. We are going to take 9 minus x minus h minus the square root of 9 minus x times, let me do this, I'll do it in green, times its conjugate. So the square root of 9 minus x minus h plus the square root of 9 minus x. And this was originally divided by h, but we're going to have to multiply and divide by the exact same thing. Otherwise, we're changing the fraction. 
If I multiply and divide by the exact same thing, I'm really just multiplying by 1. And anything times 1 doesn't change it. Okay, so we need to FOIL. This 1 times this 1 just gets rid of the square root of the square root. So we get the limit as h approaches 0 of 9 minus x minus h. Then I'm going to use that same argument. I'm going to get minus square root of 9 minus x times this. But then I get plus square root of 9 times that. They're the exact same two terms. One's plus, one's minus. They're going to cancel. So the only thing that will be left is the last two terms. They're square root of the same thing, so the square root symbol will go away. But this minus will stick around. So it's minus 9 minus x. And this is all divided by h times 9 minus x minus h plus 9 minus x. Okay, let me kind of combine a few steps here. So we're going to get 9 minus 9. We're going to get minus x. Double minus will be plus x. So this will cancel. So all we have on top is minus h. But that minus h is going to cancel with this h. The h's will cancel. And I'm left with just minus 1 on top. And now I can plug in this h of 0 right there because there's no more h's in the denominator. That would cause the whole thing to become 0. So the bottom is going to just be square root of 9 minus x plus square root of 9 minus x. So this equals minus 1 on top. And it's the exact same thing. And I have two of them. So this would be 2 square root 9 minus x. So that's the derivative. I have it right here. Okay, and they want us to state the domain of the function. So, in the first one, we can, we're going to take the square root and we're just going to make sure that that argument is greater than or equal to zero. So we're going to say 9 minus x is greater than or equal to 0. It can be equal to 0 because the square root of 0 is 0. It works out just fine. And all we have to do is add x to both sides. And we get x must be smaller than or equal to 9. The way you would write that is you would write x can be anything smaller than 9 all the way to negative infinity. And it can go up to 9 and bracket it because it can equal 9. So this equal sign turns out to be a bracket. So that's what I have there. Now it's a little different for g prime because this is in the denominator. So it's going to become 9 minus x strictly greater than 0. Strictly greater than 0 because if we let it equal 0, I get 1 over 2 times 0, which is 1 over 0, which doesn't work. I can have 0 up here because I'm not dividing by it. But in the derivative, since this shows up in the denominator, I can't let this equal 0. So notice the missing equal to bar. Then we add x to both sides. And this would be still negative infinity to 9. But now we use parentheses because we're excluding 9. Can't let x equal 9. If I did, I'd get 0 in the denominator, and we have a problem. That's problem six. Okay, problem seven. <clears throat> we have x to the fourth plus 2x. So f of x plus h equals x plus h to the fourth power plus 2 times x plus h. And... If you FOIL this out, okay, I'm going to show it to you, but you're going to have to try this on your own. So the derivative is going to be oh boy, I hope I have enough room. x4 plus 2h x3 plus 6h squared x squared plus 4h cubed x plus 2x 
plus h4 plus 2h. All of that is this one. Then it says subtract, so again, then we have to subtract the original function. The original function was x4 and 2x. And let me line these up. And this is all divided by h. So I'm doing the limit thing, but I'm not writing every little step. So think about this, x plus h to the fourth, that's two bubbles you have to foil, and then two other bubbles you have to foil. So it's four bubbles, four bubbles lined up. So you have x plus h, x plus h, x plus h, x plus h. You've got to foil these two. Let me get a different color. You have to foil these two, foil these two, and then you have to multiply all that result. So you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, you get, um, I think, six terms from that, and then two terms from this other one. Now I'm looking because I'm worried I've missed a term. Okay, I believe that this is right. Um, when you do this expansion, I think there's a few other terms, but I think I combined like terms to get to this step already. Okay, so then we're gonna subtract out the original function, so x squared should go away. x4 goes away, x4 goes away. 2x goes away, 2x goes away. Now, if I've done this right, every term should have at least one h in it, which they do, h, 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 h. Then I can cancel this bottom h, with one of these, with one of these, with one of these, so it becomes two, with one of these, so it becomes three, and with this one. But then we're gonna say limit h goes to zero. So then we're gonna apply the limit as h goes to zero, and so then any term with an h in it is gonna go away anyway. But let's see what we have. We have four x cubed plus six h, x squared plus 4h squared x plus h3 plus 2. So now we apply this h is 0 into these and they're going to get wiped out. So the whole derivative should just be 4x3 plus 2, which is what we have there. Okay, so there's a a lot of stuff I didn't show you there. I didn't show you the double foil. You gotta do a lot of accounting there. Just make sure everything, um, you keep track of it all. And then combine like terms, subtract out the original equation, factor out, uh, cancel out one H from every term, make the remaining H is zero, and you should get the derivative. Okay, now we want to look at the actual function. So x4 plus 2x will be a parabola that points up because it's positive and it's an even power. So it should look like a bowl. So the best picture is um, either the top left, so they're doing red for the original function, either top left or bottom left or bottom right. So right away, because this one points down, it's out because this was positive. The x4 was positive. Okay, now the derivative function is x cubed. Well, x cubed, any x cubed, is it like a sideways s that goes like this, and then if I add plus two to it, I shift it up two, it's gonna go up like that. So um, the only one that makes sense is this bottom right. So it's kind of hard to see that's at two right there. So that would be the original function and its derivative lined up. Okay, problem eight is not too bad. It's gonna say, the graph of f, state the numbers of which f is not differentiable. Not differentiable. So we can't take derivatives of sharp corners. We saw that earlier. So it's not differentiable there, which is at negative 4. And we can't take derivatives of gaps. So that's x of 0. So we can't take a derivative at x minus 4 and x0 because of the sharp corner and the gap.
Okay, the figure shows f, f prime, and f double prime. So f double prime just means another derivative, but the, the, the physical interpretation is the same. It would be the slope of the tangent line. So let's just work off the answer. So f would be the a curve. So as you can see, right here, the derivative is 0. And the derivative curve is b. So right there, that derivative should be 0. And it's, these are all plus, this is plus, 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 so those are all pluses. And then over here, it's minus, 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 but they're small numbers, they're close to zero. So that's how we have this B curve. It's all pluses in here, then zero, lines up with this one, and then all these are negatives. Okay, so the, the green curve, the B curve, is the first derivative. Now let's look at that one. So now we zoom in on this one and we say, oh, it's going to be zero right here, the derivative. So this blue, light blue curve would be the double derivative. And this is positive, 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 positive. These are all positive. And it's negative, 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 zero. So it looks like zero about right there. So we have negative, positive, zero, negative. So all of these are positive. Uh, yeah, blue curve. So all of these are positive. Is that like the wrong curve? No, no, this is right. So these are all positive. Then zero lines up with this line right here. Then these are all negative values, and they're getting closer to zero. Kind of messy, but if you look at that and logic your way through, hopefully it's not too bad of a problem. Okay, last problem. Find the derivative of x raised to the two-thirds. Okay. Okay, so g of x is x to the two-thirds, which means g of x plus h is x plus h to the two-thirds. And so we're going to plug that into our formula. Our formula says the derivative should equal the limit as h approaches zero of x plus h to the two-thirds minus x to the two-thirds. And that's all divided by h. Okay, like before, we are going to multiply and divide by the conjugate of this. So we're going to take all of this times We're going to take all of that times x plus h to the two-thirds plus x to the two-thirds and the same on the bottom. Okay, and just like before, on top, we're going to get x plus h times x plus h. Now, when you multiply these two fractions together, their, their powers actually add. So this is going to be x plus h to the 4 thirds. Then you're going to get minus x times that plus x times that. The middle two terms will go away. Then you're going to get minus x to the 2 thirds plus x to the 2 thirds. You're going to get x to the 4 thirds all divided by h times x plus h to the two-thirds plus x to the two-thirds. Okay, now, okay, now this will feel like a bit of a stretch, but this is like the difference of perfect squares. So you can we can factor the top into x plus h to the two-thirds minus x to the two-thirds times x plus h to the two-thirds 
Okay, I actually started to go backwards. So this one, unfortunately, we do have to use the other formula. So I was trying to avoid the other formula, but we are going to need it. So that one looks like this. The derivative of a function evaluated x is a is equal to uh, the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a all over x minus a. So this is a different type of derivative formula. It's good when you're evaluating at a point and we do have it at a point here. So let's see how this one's going to work. So, and the only thing is here we have g instead of f but it's not a huge deal. So we're going to have g of x which is x to the two-thirds minus f of a, which would be a to the two-thirds, all over x minus a. And the top is actually the difference in perfect squares. And I'm not writing the limit here. I'll write it in at the end. So we can write this as x to the one-third minus a to the one-third, <coughs> x to the one-third, plus a to the one-third. So if you were to FOIL this out, you would get x one-third times x one-third, which is x two-thirds, add those two fractions, minus ax plus ax, so the middle terms cancel, and then it would be minus a to the two-thirds. And then, this is the hard part, we're going to imagine that this is a perfect cube. So we're going to say that <clears throat> x to the 1 minus a to the 1 is a perfect cubic because it's like taking 1 third and then cubing it which would give you x to the 1. Let me actually write that. So x1 minus a1 is the same as x to the 1 third cubed minus a to the 1 third cubed. So then we need the formula for the difference of perfect cubes. And the difference of perfect cubes says this. Okay, it says this. If you have a cubed, I don't want to use a, but every, all these do, a cubed minus b cubed, it gives you a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b cubed, uh, b squared. But our a is x to the one-third, and our b is a to the one-third. So we're going to replace that. So this is x to the one-third minus a to the one-third. I'm going to start write this over here. times a squared, which would be x to the two-thirds, plus ab, which would be a to the one-third, x to the one-third, plus a to the two-thirds. Just matching these things up. So we have x to the two-thirds, plus a to the one-third, x to the one-third, and plus a to the two-thirds. And what we get is this whole first term cancels with this whole first term. And we're going to have <coughs> the limit as x approaches a of x to the one-third plus a to the one-third divided by x to the two-thirds plus a to the one-third x to the one-third plus a to the two-thirds. Now because we were able to because we were able to get rid of this x minus a 
That was the only term making it so we couldn't plug in a for x because it would this would have become zero. So now we can replace all x's, these green, we can replace all x's with a now. Because we're not going to have a divide by zero problem. So this is going to equal a to the one-third plus a to the one-third divided by a to the two-thirds plus a to the one-third times a to the one-third plus a to the one-third, uh, two-thirds, two-thirds. Well, on top we get 2a to the one-third and on the bottom we have 1a to the two-thirds, 1a to the two-thirds, and a times a, a to the one-third times a to the one-third is a to the two-thirds, so we really have one, two, three, a to the two-thirds. Okay, now we can cancel. <clears throat> a to the one-third will get rid of one of these and make it a one. So the final, final answer will be 2 on top of 3a to the one-thirds. 2 on top of 3a to the one-thirds. Probably not one I would put on a test. <laughs> okay. Um, doable, not fun. Lots of, um, even I went down the wrong path. I had to think, mm, can't do it this way, got to do it the other way was hoping not to have to show you this formula. Um, I like to try to do one formula for all of them, but unfortunately, sometimes it breaks down. So we had to use this. Okay, so let's finish this off. So we got the right derivative now. And uh, if you go to Desmos, you will see that y equals x to the 2 thirds is um, this top left picture. So. Here's your, your function, x to the two-thirds, and then you can see it has a vertical tangent line at zero, zero. So notice this is not differentiable right there, and that's the case of x being zero. So if you plug zero in here for a, you get a divide by zero error. So the derivative does have an issue there at that point. Okay, I think that's everything we need to show you for 2.8.